He came to me with money in his hands. He offered me. I didn't ask him. I wasn't knocking someone's door down. I was running from that. When I got out, I was in that. I was already through that. I had that. I had the studio. I don't want to take my time going to work. I got a motorcycle and a sleeping bag and about 10 to 15 girls. What the hell I want to go off into, into work for, man? Work for money. Money. I got all the money in the world. I'm the king, man. I rule the underworld, guy. I decide who does what and where they do it at. What? I don't want to act like I'm some teeny bop for somewhere for somebody else's money. I make the money, man. I roll the nickels. The game is mine. I deal the cards. <laughs> Neo Punk FM. Who are we here with today? T Archivist. I think we'll go, we'll go with that. That's what most people know me as. What goes through your head when you listen to Death Grips? I think um, the sort of classic thousands of fiery horsemen sort of thing, um, running in the dark. The house I grew up in, we had a very long driveway up the hill. And when I bring the trash cans down, usually at night before the trash would come, I'd run up as if a banshee was chasing me. And that's the kind of feeling that I try to get from listening to Death Grips. You ever just want to, like, go to the wall and just like eat asbestos. It's like ashwagandha on steroids, man. Uh, manic, depraved, but also like dancey thoughts, I guess. Nothing really, but in a good way. What's the worst possible thing you could think of right now? Worse. Probably like staying up past 8.30. Uh, I am so much cooler than everybody else. I go angry, man. I, I go feral. I scratch my skin. I look like an addict. You think they're tweakers out here? No, the, the real one's me. Lasagnas, a lot of eggplants. Not good things. I'll say that. Murder, torture, violence. Um, and it's just good music. Who am I here with today? Uh, you can call me Jessica. What goes through your head when you listen to Death Grips? That will break the Geneva Convention, probably. Everybody saw that Anthony interview, or that Anthony review, and I was like obsessed with it when I saw the money store. What is the most schizo thing that you've ever done? See, when people are driving, people don't want to make eye contact while driving because it's very awkward. Um, I do. I like to make faces at people. What kind of faces would you do on the road? I can, I can do the, uh, the, the troll face. Yesterday, I was driving, and uh, someone cut me off, so I pulled up next to them and started doing the driving crooner thing while looking directly at them, and I almost wrecked my car. Have you figured out how to like how to make money from the driving crooner yet? No, but I, I know God put me on this earth to uh, figure that out, I know. Check out this shirt, it says, uh, I caved my sister's head in with a big rock. That's really funny. Uh, I go by Slacker. The most schizo thing I've ever done, it was like 3 a.m. and I was at a gas station, and this dude like started coming up to me and saying sh and instead of being a normal person and walking away, I just started making a bunch of like weird f***ing metal screams. And then he just was like, oh, sh and then he ran away. I guess he thought I was a crack addict or something. But I feel kind of bad about it because he wasn't really doing anything. He was just kind of aggressively yelling at me. But I don't know. I took a picture of like my hair up. So it looks like I'm bald on the top of my head. And I was like on the bathroom floor, like eating a piece of cheese. And I said it to all my friends. Notice circles way too much and ponder the meaning of circles way, way too much. How long did you spend pawning the, the meaning of circles? Uh, probably over three or four days of my life as a whole. What conclusion did you come to from doing that? Uh, circles rock and they mean everything. When I was in high school, one time I ate too much chicken and threw up in the street. And I ate too much and I drank a lot of sauce. Oh, there's a Snapchat video going around. It's somewhere in Memphis. Someone has it. This dude. I swear, he has like some schizo episodes on Snapchat stories. He'll go around shooting his gun into the woods. Memphis is crazy. A buddy of mine, he knew some that was, that was schizophrenic once because he did a lot of acid and fried his brain and uh, he hit himself in the woods. Well, it's hanging around somewhere. I'm assuming they got him down by now. It was like 10 years ago, probably. So I was friends with this girl named Rye, which is funny, I'm Riley. So I was like, oh my God, we're like best friends. And like, I came to her house and I was convinced she was gonna murder me. So I brought a knife with me and I kept it under the blanket the whole night because I thought she was like waiting for me to fall asleep so she could like brutally murder me. And I ended up calling my boyfriend and having him pick me up because I was afraid I would like try and protect myself who like I don't need to be protected because she she wasn't gonna murder me I thought she was probably told my dad that I forgive him yeah he didn't deserve that at all I uh I, I'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down I don't thank you <laughs> uh, I'm an actor I memorize lines in my head sometimes so it's like 
some people will see me in my car like going over lines like like all that sort of thing what do you say is the most disturbing thing you've seen on the internet i saw a video once of a guy talking to like a woman he hugs her and she goes into like an elevator and then she once she closes the door he himself in the head i'd be in them red rooms man the totally real red rooms on the dark web that tour browser i saw this video the other day of, of a guy walking and he had tripped and fell and it looked like it hurt and it really stressed me out do you think the guy was okay he said ah, that's what he said and it, it broke my heart that, that might be an episode of family guy that you're thinking it, of. okay yeah it was family guy that's right no i, I love family guy I'm a big fan of it um i guess recently that dude who pissed on the Death Grips mosh pit, that would be the most disturbing thing I've seen recently. Someone shot glass. I think everybody's seen that video, the jar video. How old were you when you, when you, think, when you saw that? I think I was probably 12 or 13 when I saw that video. This guy, this British guy was driving through the, the street, like imagine the car going up the street, looking at the curb. This man's legs are off his body and the guy just goes, man, leg fell off, man. That's some f***ed up, mate. That's some baki shit. So crazy. But with my own eyes in person, I'm pretty sure it happened back in kindergarten, but some girl fell off. It's a playground with a second level. They fell off the bridge onto mulch and just like opened their face like a shower head. Wow. And it's just leaking. We've all seen the beheadings and the, and the you know, the pain Olympics. But I saw a video one time of an ostrich ripping its own head off. It, its head was stuck in a metal gate and it ripped its own head off. I don't think I could do that. Rip your own head off through a gate. You know, in a way, it still ties back to the whole beheading thing. But people care about animals. We don't care about, like, Guatemalan guys or anything like that. So, like, in, like, let's say, like, a trolley dilemma, right? Three ostriches or, like, five Guatemalan guys. Land birds are pretty sick. You know, we're running out of them. I'm going to have to go with the ostriches on that one for sure. There's been some dark web stuff of selling organs I've seen online. Shit's kind of crazy, but uh, someone like stomping a stiletto heel into someone's penis. It was very not great. Well, we all know about Blue Waffle. That was like the classic one just because like I was what, like eight years old? And they're like, look up Blue Waffle. It's really cool. And then I looked up Blue Waffle. And it was especially traumatizing because of how young I was. But I've seen much worse stuff. Cartel gore? Like funky town type shit? Wordle. What's like the longest that you've ever been institutionalized for? Oh, a week. But that was, listen bro, if you get broken up with, just move on. What's the longest you've ever been institutionalized for? I'm a teacher, so currently about a year and two months. One time I got locked in the back of a mall for uh, stealing those pocky things, those sticks. I don't think it was worth it. It was the fudge covered ones. I've never been institutionalized. Um, I might have been if I wasn't, if I hadn't been homeschooled. I probably would have gotten diagnosed with like ADHD way earlier on and seemingly like autism or something like that. But I might crack any day now. Um, Probation officers are crazy, man. That's all I got to say to that question. What does it mean to be noited? The suffix of paranoid. Noited. It's just that simple to me. That's like asking me the meaning of life, you know? Take it back to someone like Camus. Imagine Sisyphus noited. Imagine Sisyphus pushing the boulder and continuing to be noited. He was a beta. Zeus told him, pull that sh So he's gonna do it. He didn't watch enough uh, Sneeko and Andrew Tate and that kind of shit. It wasn't alpha enough. Be noited. Consider all angles. Uh, I've seen footage and therefore I stay noited. I know it, therefore I am. Do you have any deep, dark confessions you would like to share? I think one time I uh, contributed to the death of a dog. Uh, I had like a really old pug when I lived in a big house. We left the house and the pug was on the leash on a hot day. And I saw that it was on the leash and I didn't say anything. And I think it died because it was left on the leash because it was dead when we came back to the house. And how old were you? I was 16, I think. Do, do you let that affect like your day-to-day -day life? Uh, when I think about it, it, it does make me feel very guilty, but I don't really think about it every day. Maybe, one, maybe once every few months. Yeah. I don't blame you. You know, there's a lot of discourse about the new Troy Sivan remix. I think it's fire. Well, I, um, I shower with the lights off. So. I like to feel like I'm in the womb again. <laughs> so I make the water really cold or really hot. And sometimes I curl up in a ball and sit there for hours. I don't think I can share my deepest confession just because as I also have a little bit of a following, I don't think there's too much I want to say. Can you give us a hint? Father John Misty. 
that, that's my name. Father John Misty. I'm actually from Northern California. This isn't me. I feel like you just forgot to take your schizo pills. You know what I mean? Like, did you take your Lexapro last night? So one time my Nintendo Switch charger broke and I had a roommate who also had a Nintendo Switch charger. While they were asleep, I basically went over and took their Nintendo Switch charger and switched it out with mine and didn't tell them. And so for months they kept asking me for my charger, but it was really their charger that I stole from them. And then I got really guilt, felt really bad about it. And then I told them and then they got mad at me, but that's pretty much all I got. Yeah, uh, no can do, not yet. I gotcha. They'll get me in prison one day. That's a joke, by the way. You know, I'm, uh, this, is a, this is an act. I know I, they might not put this in the video, but yeah. I believe I'm you. I'm pretty nice. I'm cool. Probably when I was like in third grade, I want to say, my brother was playing uh, Guitar Hero 3. And he was playing uh, Through the Fire and Flames, which is like the hardest song. And he stood up for a brief moment. I pulled the chair out from under him. And when he missed a note, it makes a really funny noise. So when he fell down, it was just a cacophony of like clinks. It was really funny. What do you think that MC Ride does in his free time? I think he likes to take bubble baths. He is such a closeted man. I don't know, just sit in a dark room and yell. That's all I got, really. He doesn't like watch like any TV shows, you don't think? Or? He might be a really big fan of Frasier. He would call in, hello, this is Dr. Crane. <laughs> the whole thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably like plays uh, Wordle. He does the same word five times. <laughs> well, we know he paints, that's one thing. Um, probably exercises a lot as well. Probably reads like Crowley, Wikipedia deep dives on Genesis P origin, Throbbing Gristle, that sort of sh He's like the hardcore Tom Brady, man. He's out here going crazy. Just keep huffing that sh He's also like using occultism to keep him strong in the same way that Tom Brady's like witch wife does. She like uses crystals and like prays to like the moon so that he wins games. I don't know why people think that weird. That's like some normal white girl sh man. He kissed his son for what a lot of people thought was a bit too long on the lips. Yeah, I mean, he he's Tom Brady. He, yeah. I guess that's goat activities, man. I feel like he likes flowers. I always thought like maybe he had a green thumb and maybe he has a lot of flowers around his house. What, what kind of flowers do you think he might have? He's a chrysanthemum guy, I think. He, he strikes me as someone who's like, can really cool down with a glass of red wine. Gooning. Next question. Why do you think they didn't let Andy on tour? Andy's not coming on tour? This is the first time I'm hearing about it. There's like theories going around that he's just like uh, like engineering and like uh, mixing new music and shit. But I think he's just doing meth in his Discord. Just doing meth in his Discord call, like A2B2. Everyone loves Andy, but we're not here to see Andy. I want that homeless guy, two homeless guys, just one that can play drums, kind of. He must have died or something, man. Probably because they wouldn't let him keep his shirt on and he was the only one with a girlfriend. Makes sense. Maybe the reason why Andy isn't on the tour is because he doesn't participate in like being super mysterious and, and like scritzo. So, and they're like, dude, you, you gotta stop you posting gotta, cats. It's like ruining you, the you character. Gotta, you gotta get into the form. You gotta get into that backstage before they get into character. M MC Wright is like wearing an Oxford button down and he's wearing glasses. That kill just falling now smoking a cigar, reading the newspaper, reading golf. And Andy's there, you know him, building Legos. The talk comes, I was like, Andy, what the f you doing? You're posting cats. We got to get into character, and, they, and everyone just realizes what they're wearing. They're like, oh, we actually got. We got to go full skizzo right now. MC Ryan rips off his shirt. Yeah. That kill. They can't afford to put a shirt on him anymore. It's like, no, nah, I'm good. And he leaves with all his equipment. What mosh moves are you gonna use to defend yourself in the pit if a PCP like kind of fiended up guy came towards you? Yeah, I like a wedgie. I think a wedgie is good for that because no matter how many drugs you're on. It still hurts back there, man. Um, I guess this is topical. I'm just gonna piss, I guess. I'm gonna, yeah. just gonna piss. I'll make sure my bladder is very full, fear me. Good strategy. Well, first of all, I'm a recovering PCP addict, so that kind of, uh, like, you know, demeaning language, not really appreciated. I grew up in, like, a ska scene. We lived on this uh, farm, and we only listened to ska music. So I grew up two-stepping and stuff. I actually was, I, I, that's all I really know how to dance. So I just do aggressive, like, Ska, skanking, pretty much. My classic is um, the fetus position. You should all get on the ground, I'll curl up, uh, might get stepped on, kind of warm out a little bit. I think I would probably bite him first. I think I'd take a, take a bite out of his arm. What if he had AIDS? I just got kicked off my health insurance. I don't make enough money. 
but uh, so very much not real. And the healthcare is like made up anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna kill myself by 30 anyway, so we're out here. Do you think that Death Grips are actually like post web cracked out schizo like occult wishes, or do you think that's like all a character and they're they're normal in real life? If there was like some homeless person run over in the middle of this city today, which I'm sure happens more often than uh, you'd think, I feel like he'd be a prime suspect. Oh, it's definitely a character, dude. Like they're definitely like doing like wine painting things. They're playing into characters a lot. It's about archetypes. It's about maintaining and creating mystery. With, with Death Grips, it's very constructed. It's very purposeful. Like you see what they want you to see and that makes you want to see more. And so that's why they do sort of this like occultish stuff because it's very interesting. Do you think that they actually like manifested the Ariana Grande Manchester Do you know about that? I heard about that on Reddit. I poke around Reddit sometimes. But I'm afraid to say something about that. <laughs> uh, don't get me started. I'm a conspiracy theorist, and um, I do subscribe to that belief. I actually have other theories on that. I don't want to say that on video, but we can talk afterwards. But I, I do have some insight, um, some very close. To That's a loaded question. Short answer, yes. And uh, long answer, yes. I mean, people have always blamed, like, aggressive music for mass tragedies, so I can see why it's easy for somebody to say, like, well, Death Grips makes aggressive music, and aggressive people do aggressive things, so that led to the... But I don't think so. I think art is art. Let's just say George Bush wasn't done with Building 7. Interesting. I feel like they're just being as real as it gets, and they're, like, the calling card for this generation. It may be post-irony. It may not, you know? You just gotta keep doing it. Under the court of law, all this is irony. If the FBI wants to say anything about it, all this is ironic. I'm lying my ass off right now. What do you want to be buried with? Probably like a pound of weed. It would have to be something super sick. I might do a dad outfit in my casket. I think that would be good. Shirt tucked in, but it's too big, so it's still hanging over. I like that. Get an apron, chef's hat in the in the casket like this with a fork and a spatula. Kiss the coat. Stupid apron, maybe like a bikini apron. That would be awesome, dude. I've thought about this a lot, too. What I want to happen is I want to have my skull preserved and then my the ashes from the rest of my body pressed into diamonds and embedded in my eye sockets. So you can, like, watch your, whatever the opposite word of ancestors is. Yeah, my descendants. I want it to be like a family heirloom type thing. I, I've heard of people doing that before. No, you haven't. I want to be sent off into the ocean like a Viking. Redditor style. Fuck you, dude. All of my Death Grips vinyls. No one can have them. No one. Sorry. Sorry, Grandma. Um, probably, like, my Costco card. My girlfriend convinced me that, like, my physical body doesn't matter after I die. So she's like, yeah, just have them fucking wheel you into this 5,000-degree uh, oven. Throw, throw, you, throw you down the river, fill you with cream. I mean, you're dead. The beauty of this generation is that it's all ironic. It's uh, no one is actually true to themselves. Everyone's playing a character because everyone feels like they're on a stage. Everyone's being watched by social media, by the internet. Um, everyone is looking at themselves through the third person, knowing and thinking, what are people going to think of this if it's posted online? I don't want to be in a cringe compilation. Do you think that you have any criminal tendencies? I used to, you know, steal Pokemon cards and hot Cheetos. I used to steal a lot of Starbursts, just shove them down my sleeve. What's like the biggest lick that you've ever hit? Got to be a king size payday. Honestly, I'm a big candy head. I just got a bag of Take Five from Walmart. They were on closeout. You can't beat it, dude. It's Pretzel, peanut butter, over. The giant Slim Jims with Randy Savage on them? Yes. Those are goaded. And you got to get a Bev, you know. I'm an Arizona watermelon guy. They got to bring them back to a dollar, bro. What's going on? This Bidenomics is killing me. It was accidental. I accidentally stole a uh, bottle of chocolate milk from uh, Kroger's one time. I was very embarrassed because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a criminal. I don't steal. <laughs> Any other like uh, criminal tendencies outside of the one ch chocolate milk that you stole from Kroger? Assassinations, but only like political assassinations. What's the most expensive thing they've ever stolen? Potentially these Rick Owen Ramones. Um... I cheat on my taxes. Also trespassing. Um, anybody who likes the great outdoors has to trespass a lot. I uh, threaten a lot of things to, uh, you know, like not like too towards a specific right, right. person, but you know, I'll just like project it out into the world where uh, once again, nobody else is around when this happens. But uh, 
I don't know. Maybe you'll catch me on the news someday. I feel like people can feel it. I've been called cold, mean, callous, the whole nine yards. You can ask my girlfriend. She'll tell you the same thing. Been there, done that. <laughs> If you're watching this, go subscribe to neonpunkyoutubechannel.com. I love you guys.